My name is Hod Lipson. I'm a associate professor at the uh, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department here at Cornell University. We do research in uh, various aspects of robotics, but uh, we also uh, have been exploring lots of different uh, new directions in design and manufacture of other things, uh, which is how we got to this whole area of 3D printing. Fab at Home is an open hardware 3D printer, and it's the only 3D printer that can use a wide variety of materials. So you can print anything from cookies to Play-Doh to silicone, stainless steel, epoxies, clay, and anything else your heart can desire. We gave the machine away, the designs away for free online. People started building their own. And after they were done 3D printing with silicone, they decided, well, what other goo do I have laying around the house? And the answer was peanut butter and Nutella and easy cheese. We started using food materials initially as kind of st structural support materials. Uh, you know, we use the frosting uh, as support material because it dissolves in water and so forth. These are very kind of useful structural properties. Then we went on a little tangent and decided to experiment with hydrocolloids. They're nice, fun materials. It's actually uh, the same materials we use for 3D printing living tissue, which we also do on this machine. We tried to build foods from the ground up, where we would control the texture with the hydrocolloids, flavoring agents for the flavors, and add in vitamins. So you can imagine, you know, dial in your hamburger, and it also gives you your Lipitor medication and everything you need and builds a fake hamburger from the ground up. Uh, we just forgot one fundamental rule of cooking, which is that uh, you should cook with food. And uh, we went back to the drawing board and with the help of Chef David Arnold, we started working on modifying traditional foods. Anything from uh, cheese and pesto to pasta to frosting, peanut butter, chocolate. Scallops that we printed into space shuttles and deep fried. Cubes of turkey with cubes of celery paste on the inside. Pear jam. Brie, I mean, it's really the, anything that you can push towards a range. But my personal favorite is a new form of deep fried corn we developed uh, with Chef David Arnold. Could you think modern America, deep frying, corn, solved problems? But with 3D printing, anything's possible. The fact that you can print with food at all is, is still fascinating. For example, let's say if you can print a cookie, um, as you've seen, that has uh, vertical text inside, there is nothing new about the materials in those cookies. It's still chocolate and vanilla dough, uh, but it's the particular way that you combine them and the particular geometry that would take, normally would take a virtuoso chef uh, uh, skill, level of skill to do. Uh, that's, uh, that's really the novelty here. So usually we don't see new materials, but it's the new ways of combining them and so forth. It'll be in restaurants, it'll be in homes, and it'll be used for automating food preparation, but it'll be used for more than that. It'll give you control over your food. So maybe you like cookies that are a little extra crispy on the outside and be able to go into your application, tell it how much you want crispiness, and it'll automatically make the cookie the way you want or you can record grandma's recipe and how she drew out the individual treats for the family dinner and then a hundred years from now your great grandkids can be 3D printing out the same exact recipe with the same exact motions. This will uh, be a kind of home appliance that uh, will be, it will be difficult to explain how we live without it.